Michael and Zach back again. This is part two of the Arkansas crew, their monster discussion on, you know, theological terms, Arminianism, Calvinism. Yeah. Um, so didn't want you just to jump into that cold. Yep. Yep. So uh, here we're going to pick up with a discussion like, you know, what can we agree on? Where can we work together? You know, how does a Calvinist and an Arminian, do we have to be fighting each other all the time? Do we have to be arguing all the time? Can we, you know, go out and evangelize together? So all those good things. Stay tuned for a good episode. From the hearts of the low country in South Carolina. It's the Take Two Podcast, where we take theology to the next level. All right, so I put some common things down that I think we both agree on, and I picked the first two because prayer, I, I've never made this uh, as a Calvinist, but I have heard other, some Calvinists say, Arminians, why do you pray for lost loved ones? Aren't you asking God to override their will, and aren't, aren't you about free will so so I'm I'm kind of addressing like both of us even though both of us believe that praying for lost loved ones God can answer that and work in their hearts and lives to change their mind open their eyes etc I don't want to put words in, in y'all's mouth but. Well, I don't worship free will if God wants to override a person's free will he's he may very well do so. Uh, so that doesn't bother me, and I'm not going to be concerned about, oh, I can't ask God to to change this person's heart because that would be breaking some rule that I have or some rule that God has, and, that, and I don't see it that way at all. I, I believe that God hears and responds to our prayers. And if I care about someone and want them to be saved, then I will ask God to, to do so. Send someone to minister to them, uh, work in their heart, uh, cause them to see, you know, to whatever. So any of those things, and if God wants to over, uh, overpower their will so that they can be saved, okay, I, I love this person, I want them to be saved. Yeah. I, I'm not uh, hung up on God cannot do something because of either some, uh, some, some what do you call it? something that you restriction he's placed on himself even or uh something restricting him from outside you know i, I don't i'm not concerned with those things uh, when so. i pray for others salvation it's always the same words basically i ask god to convict them to draw them and that they would respond yeah. and you know how all the in-between stuff happens I don't really care. No, that's good. I, I, I pretty much, I, I pretty much agree that that's an area we can find common ground on. I think people sometimes um, would throw the question back at Calvinists: "Is why do you pray if you know, or especially for the someone's, for someone's or salvation or something because that the elect will be saved or something mm -hmm. like that?" And and that's just not how I. <laughs> Or I, I view it at all. I right. also believe that you know God hears our prayers and answers and works through works through the spreading of His word and planting seeds, and that's you know the means of how He accomplishes what He wants to accomplish as well. So I I think it's an area of common ground for sure. Yeah, and then I th I threw on here the other one, kind of the other side, uh, preaching the gospel, evangelism, because you know I think this is something Calvinists. And, and rightfully so, because there are some Calvinists, I think, uh, who, uh, like we mentioned, don't. But um, we, I think we all agree that faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. Blessed are the feet of those who bring good news, right? That, that we're called to preach the gospel, and some of those will respond. Um, all right. And then I put down here apologetics because uh, like there could be even differences among how you do apologetics potentially, but um, this idea of you know, maybe defending the word in a rational defensive way, I think we're all good with that. I, I don't, or I wouldn't think that necessarily you're 
opinions on soteriology necessarily affects the way that you go about the defense of the faith. I will say that it's, I have seemed to, like when you see different people, it does seem to me that most, or like Calvinists and stuff that I like have come into contact with maybe or fall somewhat on the, like, you know, presuppositional method or something, but I, you'll see Sproul and, and other, or Kokel or, and things like that that don't necessarily follow that way either, so. Right. Um, I think all presuppositionalists, and I was trying to think, is there an Arminian who's a presuppositionalist? I think, from what I understand, to be a presuppositionalist, you basically need to be a Calvinist, but not all Calvinists are mm -hmm. presuppositionalists. So just different way, different uh, mindset on how you go about doing apologetics. Uh, I have to admit, I don't know anything about this subject, and I haven't been one that thought it was all that important. Uh, <laughs> and I know that you would disagree with me there. What I think is that God is reaching out to people he wants to use me in that effort, and that I am to preach the gospel. I am to say the Bible's true, and uh, and God is working, and and I want to be part of that. And so, I don't even know of the different. I don't know what y'all are talking about. <laughs> uh, but, but that's okay. But um, but I think we are to spread the word. Sure. And, and, and the spirit is moving. Mm -hmm. that, that's what I think. Well, I think, Cordell, you asked us to maybe do a, a podcast on that at some point in time. I don't know. We, got, we actually have a list of things we're moving through. But, uh, may, so maybe, maybe in I'll the future. Learn. Yeah. I'll, yeah. Y'all you know, uh, yeah, uh, need to find a really good presuppositionalist to, to argue with you. Uh, otherwise, it may be kind of like the problem we might have run into a little bit is that we don't have completely opposite sides yeah, of the yeah. spectrum. Tell me if, if, and maybe my bias against getting bogged down in apologetics is based on a misconception. I have heard forever. We've got to teach our kids this or that because they're going to college and they're walking away from the faith. So we need to teach them how to deal with a college professor who says the earth was billions of years old. And we need to teach them how to argue with their professors about evolution. I think that's, well, I don't have any use for that. People walk away. And this kind of goes to my answer to that question that I, uh, about does some, a person persevere in the faith. A, a person walks away from God because they don't know it. Yeah. That kind of reveals... You sound like well, an elder at my church. Right. And <laughs> what we need to do is teach our kids to know God and, and to make sure that... Now, is that... Am I talking about the same subject or am I off on something else? I would, well, while I would want my kids to have answers to tough questions so that they're inoculated against some of those things that might cause them to pause in their walk with God, I agree that if they are connected to Christ, that Christ is going to see them through that. Um, my mindset towards apologetics isn't for maintaining kids when they go off to college, although I think that that it might help. Um, mine is more evangelistic. So you have folks who might have some uh, intellectual things against the Bible, which they can't, maybe they can't even consider the Bible to be true because they don't believe God exists. And so you might walk them through different proofs, um, proofs that uh, God exists. Um, to help them see why, well, you can continue to deny God exists, but if you deny God exists, then these are the kind of things that you have to live with, and you don't live your life that way. Those types of things to help strip away some of those maybe intellectual facades that's keeping them from accepting Christ. Uh, and and we recently had a question on Facebook about this in our in our group. And I listed, you know, several people who, by their own testimony, came to Christ through those things. That time when I realized I wasn't a believer and I was questioning things, I wouldn't have been able to give you the moral argument or the cosmological argument. But I would have been able to say, there's something here. There's got to be a God. 
that's a very uh, un, you know, uninformed cosmological argument. And the idea that um, I never doubt evil, if evil exists, there has to be some rule. So there has to be some good. Where did that goodness come from? So those, so the, a very nascent, un, uh, not a, you know, in apologetics philosophy, we try to get these down where they're, you know, airtight. But, uh, but it was a moral argument me, that helped uh, me. ask a question. Yeah. Uh, my general unconcern about all of this arguments that you're making, and I don't deny that maybe C.S. Lewis or whoever come right. to faith this way, maybe. Yeah. Uh, C.S. Lewis, the Case for Christ guy, Lee Strobel, Lee Strobel. Um, J.R. Uh, does... Does me not being a Calvinist have something to do with me not being all that in love? No, interested I, in that? I think traditionally Calvinists, more Arminians would be on the, the side of classical apologetics to, to con than uh, convince someone based on right. human reason. Yeah. yeah. And, and I don't necessarily think of, I, I think apologetics can. Granted, I am, I am starting to dip my toes in this in this thing, and I think it can be more. Or I think it can be, you know, something edifying to your own faith, edifying to other people's faith around you, or from hearing these arguments. Um, I think it can help, or like in evangelism, you know, trying to, or you know, I, I've heard the analogy, you know, you have an unbeliever that is trying to hold the truth underneath the water, and what you're trying to do is pry up the fingers and stuff. I I just don't think that my arguments are going to win them. I, I think it's going to be God's word, the Holy Spirit's right. work in there that, that wins them to faith objectively. But maybe I'm a walking contradiction, but because maybe someone who leans Armenian ought to be concerned with these arguments you're talking mm -hmm. about. And yet I'm not, I, I think that, uh, I think that you speak the word and God the Spirit works with you, confirming in that person's heart and mind this this is the truth, and He's calling me to receive it. Uh, I guess so. It's just that I believe that God is reaching out to everyone, right? Mm -hmm. So, so there's my Armenian side, and and uh, so I want to be a part of that. I, I want to be used by God to do that. Uh, whereas, so, okay, yeah, that's yeah. So. Um, yeah, we could dive down. There, there's things I could say in response, but I'll, we're I'll off hold topic. This. Are yeah, we yeah, not? Yeah, we're a little bit. We're a little bit. That's <laughs> yes. all right. All right. So, common um, ground of beliefs. We and um, I put down here that God is good. We, be, I think, we all believe that. We share in that. Um, uh, the man is sinful. That salvation is grace towards us, uh, i.e., that we're getting good things that we don't deserve. It's mercy towards us. We're not getting the the punishment that we do deserve. Salvation is through faith. Salvation is a choice that must be made. It's a good for us, and it's for the glory of God. So I just try to put some you know, basic, I think, doctrines that a Calvinist and Arminian could all agree on and walk side by side and therefore you know, carry about some of the, the roles that, a, that the church has. Um, and then you had texted something over, and I kind of basically copied that over. But I, I can read your words, but I thought maybe if you wanted to voice some of what you thought of that we should all be able to agree as well. I, I do. I, I think that um, for me, first of all, uh, it helps me to have known you, a Calvinist who has not become my enemy. All right. We can agree that the other are children of God uh, trying to do what's right and believe and will serve God. And, and, I, and I would say to any listeners, uh, God uses people from both sides of this issue to spread the gospel and to advance God's kingdom. And uh, if, if you don't know that's true, you need to look into it and see that it's true. You need to not just read and listen to arguments about Calvinism. I, I don't. You shouldn't be doing that. Find someone from the other side and see what they're teaching and how they're leading people to God, and, and I think you'll find someone you respect. Um, the thing that I think the common ground for me between Calvinists 
and Arminians is not necessarily, well, we can agree about this doctrine or this one. It's, it's that we believe in Jesus, that, that God is judging the human race in the future, and that he sent his son who died on the cross and came to save sinners. And he's called us to believe. He's said all men everywhere to repent. And when people do believe, they're called to live holy lives, to let their light shine before the world, that people will see good works and glorify God. Uh, all of these things we have in common, and we are commanded to make disciples of all nations and spread the gospel. And if someone's a Calvinist and they're doing that, they believe in Jesus and have trusted Him for their salvation and they are trying to live a holy life and they are doing the command of Jesus to spread the gospel and bring people to, to know Him. Well, how can I argue? You know, I'm not fighting with that guy. We're on the same team, you know. Uh, so that's our common ground is Jesus Christ. It's, it's what He did for us, what He has called us to do, and uh, it, it is the glory of God. It's yeah. the coming kingdom, uh, all of that. I, I think that's what truly holds us in common. Yeah. I agree. Well said. Uh, any I, else you want to add? I had those things listed kind of under primary issues about Jesus. He is the only way, the Messiah, you know, God and God condescending incarnate about the hypostatic union, you know, Create or, and then you know attributes of God. I think we would all you know agree on Creator, Eternal, the Omnis um, in general, um, Omnipresence, Omniscience, Omnipotence, you know, Omnibenevolence, Holy, Just, Immutable. I think all those things are places that we find are common ground as well as well as the Bible, Biblical revelation, you know, inspiration, inerrancy. I think all those things. I'd written solas down with the. With a uh, with a question mark, which I think we would all yeah. probably for all the. I mean, I think that's kind of a thing. That's more of yeah. a you're either Protestant or or, or, or not. not. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, if, if you probably a uh, the, the Yeah, I saw ones. a gentleman with them tattooed on his arms today. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. He is. Oh, that's good. recent. Uh, sometime this year. Okay, <laughs> right. how about that? All right, so then I have this question here, and we were kind of talking about this before the podcast, and Aaron was like, you just want to record this conversation. <laughs> um, so we have all this common ground, and my question was, you know, in a sense, uh, why does it matter? And maybe maybe people would say, uh, maybe Aaron would be back there saying it doesn't matter. You all, you all argue about stuff that that it doesn't make a difference. Uh, I like that more yeah. also. Yeah. So are most of the people in the congregation. So are most of the people in the congregation. The preacher's up here, and he says some obviously Calvinistic things, and two people out here are squirming a little, <laughs> and the rest of the people are not, yeah. because they're not consumed with this issue. And some of them, and this is not a uh, uh, saying something bad about them, it, they don't, eat, they don't know that's what's being talked about. Uh, because, so, uh, it matters, but it doesn't matter so much to everybody. And all of those people are God's people. Right. And, and some of them are not thinking about this. Me and my brothers and my dad would be talking about this at night, and my mom was, I would be saying, I wish y'all would shut up, quit talking. <laughs> you, you know. Yeah. Uh, and that doesn't mean that they are less devoted to God or less or any further from God than, than someone who's consumed with it. There were times when I was over y'all's house that me and your dad were talking about it and uh, your mom and Jill were like, I wish they'd shut up and stop talking about this. <laughs> and that's because uh, in, to a lot of people, it's those common things. Yeah. Uh, God sent Jesus into the world to save sinners and spread the gospel. That's what matters, yeah. and uh, and we and if we have some little differences in exactly what's going on in the spiritual realm, as, as all of that's happening, uh, maybe that doesn't matter as much. So there are some doctrines. Well, you get people 
any doctrine can become someone's hobby horse uh, that they just they just lift it up and it's like the most important thing. Um, maybe the age of the earth, or maybe you know whether it was a worldwide or global flood. Um, but I, to me, this particular doctrine seems to get the most people angsty, riled up. Emo- well, if people get riled up, you know, because we, we already said there's probably 85 percent of people who that that doesn't affect me. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do this the best I can and and live my life. But this one seems to get people maybe up to the nines and ready to be pugilists, uh, boxers. Um, so what do y'all think? Why, why do you think that is? Before you get into your deeper uh, <laughs> issue, I, I think for me and maybe others, it's past experiences uh, that you, you have had with the other whatever the other view whichever side you're on and because there are those out there that are not very loving when they talk about it uh, and and uh, it can cause harm uh, emotionally and mentally uh, to those that uh, that 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 they disagree with and so one of the main things I would say is if you're going to talk about this issue, it should be with love and with an understanding that there are those that have bad experiences uh, with the opposing view. And, uh, and if you're not coming at them or talking about this subject in love and uh, with grace, then I don't know that you should be talking about it. <laughs> you going to say why you think maybe people get it's important to them? It's, why that maybe it's, they get uh, it's important, and and I, I also something I didn't t- talk about before we started this. Uh, there is because there's it, the two sides do present a significantly different view of God and of what Jesus was doing here and it, it's significant it, it's not a small thing if, if you're really going to dig into it uh, so it ta- it's differences in who God is and what he's doing uh, so one thing I didn't mention before we started this that I think is such evidence of the grace of God and the goodness of God is that you have two views that and, that can't both be correct, now maybe neither is perfectly correct, but that present different views of God and his character and his purposes, uh, and yet God clearly saves people that believe both ways and uses them to spread his gospel. That, that shows an amazing grace and mercy of God that he deals with us foolish people who have so many misconceptions and so many wrong views. Somebody does, you know. Maybe, maybe not you. Maybe yours are all right. And yet, he not only saves them; he uses them and blesses them and loves them. Uh, but the reason that it gets people riled up is because it there are different views of God on these two sides, and uh, and they're significant, and it affects people and their loved ones, eternities, and this. Uh, this strikes emotional right. tones in them. Yeah. So that's the reason yeah. that it gets people wound up. Uh, but just look at God and what He's doing and the, the patience and the tolerance He has of our wrong thoughts. And that's amazing to me. Yeah. We were talking about Mom a while ago and uh, it's funny to me that now she's with Jesus in heaven. And she uh, knows we were she, right all along. <laughs> and she, while she was here, didn't didn't care to hear about Calvinism and, and Armenianism and the arguments about it all. But now she knows mm-hmm. uh, which side is right. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, I figure 
that it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> She's still okay. She's still okay. <laughs> so she was right all along. She was right all along. All she cares uh, about is, is Jesus. Yeah. So, Anything to add to this topic? So I thought maybe we could close out with things that we should and shouldn't do. And, Michael, you kind of already gave us some of those things. No, that's good, the preview. <laughs> That if we're going to be talking about this, like any doctrine or like anything we do, whether we're serving or preaching, you know, Paul would say in 1 Corinthians 13, if you're not doing it in love, what are you doing? Um, so we need to be, you know, gentle with each other. Um, maybe some other things, you know, I have found that um, I may not be able to articulate exactly what Brian believes. And Brian may not be able to articulate exactly what I believe. And when I try to, Brian always like, well, no, that's not right. <laughs> and then and Brian maybe will do the same thing. And I'll be like, well, no, not exactly. Which you, you would think after as much times as we've talked that we would be able to understand exactly what the other one believes. But it doesn't surprise me. If you've studied the Bible so much and haven't understood that, it doesn't surprise me that you haven't understood that. <laughs> but so maybe a, uh, something that you shouldn't do is be, be very careful of drawing a straw man of the other side. So I would always want, you know, you know, and I think it was good when we added, because our first crew of admins on this site were, we're all Calvinists and some more than others. I'll, I'll leave it like that. And so we intentionally add, I was like, we need to add some folks from other sides because it always looked bad if I, you know, had to be an admin and do something against an Arminian. And they're like, you're just doing this because I'm a Calvinist. Like, no, I'm not. I'm trying to. So it's good, you know, but I think it's good if you don't uh, say, this is what the other side believes and this is why they're wrong. It's, that's, probably better if you say this is what i believe and why and then let let the conversations happen and like i was going to say misrepresentation which is basically what we talked about but like you said y'all had discussions on this for a long long time and gone back <laughs> or back and forth about what you believe and you're still not able to completely articulate it right. when you meet up with someone that you know that you haven't had all these discussions before listening to what they actually say and not assuming that they believe this, believe that, like that they fall into a five point Arminian or five point Calvinist, I think is if you if you people are having issues, you know, even articulating that they've had this conversation a thousand times, I think listening at the very beginning when you meet someone and not assuming what category they're gonna fall into and what exactly they believe about things is important yeah. as well. Yeah. Be very careful not to say they believe something that they don't believe. And, and, uh, and I would also say, I don't think you should spend your time on YouTube listening to people argue, uh, present the case for and against this. If you want to learn, in other words, I shouldn't get all of my ideas about what Armenians believe from James White. And, and you, a Calvinist ought not to get all their ideas about um, our, about Calvinists. Anyway, you ought not only listen to Leighton Flowers or yeah. only listen to James White. You yeah. need to have the other side explain what they believe right. yeah. so that you hear what, from their mouth mm -hmm. what, what they believe. And those are probably two... You may not even want to listen to either one of those because <laughs> those are two <laughs> extremes <laughs> they're, they're, uh, that just keep going back and forth. And there's probably some more moderate people who would say they're five-point Calvinists, but they're not as extreme as a James White. I tell you what you ought to do is talk to your uh, church family yeah. and your pastor. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to go to YouTube or to find some famous preacher. Right. That's right. You've got people around you that would look, well, I, Matt would, might, they might would love to share mm -hmm. what they believe. <laughs> I, I don't know, yeah. but yeah. you can get your information from there. Uh, and I was going to say, y'all and, and me too are so close in how we believe about this, it seems to me, that of course we could be in a church together and and do absolutely fine. Yeah. You know. yeah. All right, well, any other closing thoughts? Well, that's our take. Thanks for listening to Take Two. 
Find us wherever you find podcasts and on YouTube for those who want to watch our video casts.